We were presented by WinBet Betting as a team sport. Bet together at WinBet. Eric Allen here in the studio, joined by a special guest, one of my favorite Jets of all time, Jericho Cotri. Jayco, so great to see you. Oh, man, it's good to be here. Uh, first time since 2011? Yes, yes, it is. It so, is. so what was it like when the car is taking you to the building today and what's going through your mind? I would say very, very nostalgic. Yeah. You know, um, nothing but great memories, you know, just, just start, you know, flooding your mind at that point, you know, and uh, just walking into the building, you know, seeing that green, seeing that white, you know, we didn't wear a much black when I was here, but uh, just seeing the colors here and seeing the logos, man, it was a special feeling. Uh, do you like the black in the uniform? I do. I do. I do. I always wanted that. You know, that I, I missed it. I missed it on both ends, you know, but when, once I got here, they had discontinued it. And then once I left, they brought it back. <laughs> hey, can you go down memory lane and tell folks what it was like when you were drafted in 04? Because we weren't at this facility. We were in Long Island on the campus of Hofstra University. Well, first and foremost, it was a dream come true. You know, it's something I had worked for you know, my entire life, you know, to, to, to have that moment. And then when the Jets called, when that 516 number popped up, uh, it was an exciting feeling. It was the team that I had the, the, the best connection with in the uh, interview process at the combine. And so I was very excited to hear, hear the voices on the other end of the phone. How were you only the 16th player selected in the 2004 draft class? Because only one player in that draft class, had more receiving yards in their career. And, of course, that was Larry Fitzgerald. Well, it was a loaded draft for sure. You know, we had we had every position, you know, kind of feel there. You know, quarterbacks, you know, uh, the receiver position, D linemen, you name it. All of those guys were in that draft, you know. And so uh, I picked a good time to come out. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a different time back then because if you look back at your numbers, 04 and 05, you really had to remain patient because they weren't force-feeding you into the lineup. Right, and, and when I came, uh, I, I, I was welcomed in, into a veteran group, and that was the blessing for me. You know, just had a bunch of veteran guys on offense, you know, Chad Pennington at the quarterback position, Curtis Martin at the running back position, Kevin Mawai you know, at, at center, Wayne Corbett in the same room, <laughs> you yeah. know, learning from him and uh, Santana Moss and Justin McCarrens, all of these guys on offense. And um, and so just those first two years for me was a great learning experience because I, I had, you know, an offense that was filled with vets. But were there times, and you're such a positive guy, but were there times that you went home and said, what is going on here? Well, it, 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 for me, I, I've always been about the team. That's something my dad instilled in, in me. You know, every time he asked, you know, uh, about a game, you know, he asked about how the team did first before he asked about how I did if he didn't see the game. And so uh, it was just kind of instilled in me. And, you know, I was playing on all of the special teams, so I felt yeah. like I was a starter. My wife my wife can attest to that. You know, <laughs> I, I was a starter on special teams. You know, that's how, you know, I kind of looked at it. Uh, way back then, and uh, you know, I just try to fulfill my role to the best of my abilities. What's your relationship like with Herm Edwards? Um, because one thing that he has said post coaching Jericho Cotri is, I should have put him in the lineup earlier. Well, you know, that's hindsight. You know, um, I, I knew that he loved me as a player mm -hmm. and as a person as well, and uh, and he was a big part of me feeling like I had the, the, that, that best connection, you know, with, with the Jets because of that interview process, you know. And uh, he's the reason why I, had, I wore the number 89. Hmm. You know, I wanted to switch back to my college number, 82. Um, but he kept saying 89, 89, the entire training camp. And by the end of training camp, I said, I guess I have to keep 89. What clicked in 06? You took off. I know opportunity, obviously, to put you on the field, but uh, the production was there. And what would you say in terms of when was it, like, clear in your mind that, hey, man, I'm going to be here for a while? Well, just the learning process over those first two years, uh, just soaking up all of the, the information I was getting from the vets uh, that, that took me under their wings, you know, and um, 
You know, once Ver Lavernius Cole came, Coles came back in 2005, he was instrumental in that. Um, and by the time I hit my third year, everything was just slowed down. You know, I just, it just felt like college again for me. And, um, you know, once the first game hit, first game of the year versus Tennessee, the Tennessee Titans in 06, scored a touchdown and, and I felt like there was no turning back after that. There was no turning back after that. Your first postseason experience, you guys didn't get the win in New England, but you go for over 100 yards receiving. Uh, what was, how would you remember that 06 campaign? Um, you know, it, it I, I just felt comfortable that entire season, you know, just kept, felt comfortable with my game, uh, felt comfortable with my preparation and, and you know, uh, just my ability to go out and make plays, you know, and uh, just the way that we prepared each and every week, you know, um, under the coaching staff that we had, Coach Mangini and uh, Brian Schardenheimer running the offense, uh, just, you know, every week I felt prepared to go out and make plays. And uh, and so I think that was the that was that was the biggest thing about it. Oh seven, your numbers continue to ascend, but obviously the team took a step back for a number of reasons. What was your reaction when you heard that the Jets had traded for Favre and Oate? Well, it was you know a little bittersweet in yeah. in, a, in a sense because uh, You're Chad so tight with Chad, yeah, Chad Pennington, uh we, we, we parted ways with Chad Pennington and then we brought in this exciting figure, you know, to come in and sling the ball around, you know? And so uh, it, was, it was sad to see Chad go uh, because he was instrumental in my development as well. You know, as far as that, that quarterback to receive a communication that needs to happen on a daily basis, uh, that, that was no longer there. But when Brett came in, obviously he had been in the league for a long time doing his thing and, um, the, the communication part was natural to him. So everybody was excited. You know, I remember the first practice, he was there. I mean, we had fans out there two hours before the first mm -hmm. practice, just filling up the stands out there on Long Island. And uh, it was a, there was a lot of excitement about that. What did Pennington mean to your career? Well, uh, he meant a lot because of his, his ability to address, you know, not only the, the professional part of it, but the personal part of it. You know, um, just letting guys know when they came in as, as young rookies, we met with veterans. We had veteran guys. And so uh, our first rookie meeting was with veteran guys and, you know, Chad and Curtis, them coming up and speaking to us. But but Chad making sure that we knew that we had to put in the time, you know, studying our playbook, put in the time, um, taking care of our bodies um, and just making sure we're, we're, we're just taking care of every part of what it means to be be a professional, you know, and, and that, that involves the personal aspect of it. How good was that team in 08? You were 8-3. and three. Yeah. You went into Tennessee, went into Nashville, and put on a thumping there. I mean, that team was undefeated at 10-0, and 0, and then things kind of fell apart down the stretch. We were really good. Yeah. I mean, we were really good. We, um, we had the makings of, of a team that can do it, you know, that can win it all. And, um, you know, just things that happen in, in throughout the, the, the natural course of a season, you know, with, with injuries and things of that nature, uh, that kind of affects your ability to, to push forward. And uh, unfortunately, that, that happened more so at the quarterback position than anything that, that, um, that played a big, big factor in us, you know, kind of going into that slump at the end of the year. How did Rex change the dynamic of this club in 09, just him entering the building? Well, just a free flowing atmosphere. Um, you know, guys, guys just felt more relaxed and felt more comfortable to go out and, and do their jobs. And um, you know, guys were just having a lot of fun doing 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 what we do. You know, and that's play play this child's game of football. You know, it's it's supposed to be fun. Uh, we know we have work to do, but um, the the fun aspect is always in it, and um, that's that's what he brought. He brought a lot of fun, and guys enjoy that. And you saw that free spirited nature that we had each and every week, you know, when we when we stepped out on the field. Listen, you experienced a lot of success with different quarterbacks over the course of your career because you don't play from 04 to 15 if you can't make adjustments. With that being said, how tough was it for you to 
go from Pennington to Favre to Sanchez. And that's not taking anything away from Mark. That's just a kid who started a number of games at USC, comes out early and walks into the situation, which was a good situation, but still he's an experienced signal caller. Yeah, that's the frustrating part about <laughs> about my entire career. You know, I look back and I say, man, I had all of these great guys. But then when you look at it closely, it's like I, I never had them long enough. You know, a lot of these guys get to play with the same QB for well over a decade. Right. And they get to reap the benefits from from that, you know, uh, but I never, never got that chance. And I felt like I was climbing with Chad and then we had the quarterback change there. And then another quarterback change. So three, three quarterbacks, three different quarterbacks in three, three years. And and so you're constantly working on chemistry. You're constantly working on things that, you know, uh, that will help you succeed on the field, you know, but that, that, that inconsistency is just going to, you're going to creep in at some point, you know? So, yeah, you know, it, <laughs> it would have been fun. At the you always took the high road. Uh, you always took the high road, no matter what came your way. Um, was that something y- you talked about how you were raised? Is that just something that you knew, hey, this is how you're going to handle the adversity no matter what happens? Well, people knew I was about the Jets. It was about the Jets winning first and, for- first and foremost. And uh, everybody that knows me knows that, you know, and um, and so I wasn't going to make it about me when it comes to numbers or, or things of that nature. I, I didn't play for the numbers. I played to to lock arms with the guys beside me and uh, and go out and try to try to do something special, you know, and uh, we, we had a lot of winning years, you know, during the time I was here. And, and that's something I look back on and uh, really, really have great memories about. WinBet is now live in New Jersey, and they're bringing the excitement of Win Las Vegas to online sports betting. Get in on all your favorite teams, players, and sports, from boosted parlays to live in-game odds on every major sport. They have what you need to win. Sign up today to receive a special offer, risk-free $1,000 sports bet. Download the WinBet app now or visit wynnbet.com to start winning. WinBet, an official sportsbook and gaming partner of the New York Jets. Offer subject to change. Terms and conditions at winbet.com must be 21 or older and present in New Jersey. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem, call 1-800-270-7117. The 0-9 run, you guys take down Cincinnati. You go into San Diego and take care of business against the Chargers. And then against the Colts, you have more than 100 yards receiving in that game. You have a double-digit lead against Peyton Manning in his building. What stands out about 9 Just that breakthrough. You know, you felt like you were a team, you know, that, that can push forward in the playoffs. Uh, you felt like you had – uh, the components, you know, to, to go and win it all. And, and you know, we, we we battled throughout that entire year. And then it came down to the last two games of the year to make it into the playoffs. And we won those and got into the playoff. People thought we backed into the playoffs and then we showed up. You know, we showed up and we played well. And uh, it was just a fun ride. And the biggest thing about, about that ride was the Jets fans. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, because we're going on the road, right? We're going on the road, and when we step foot into those hotels, J-E-T-S, Jets, 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 all over the place. And uh, that was a that was a fun a fun ride ride for us all. So I'm getting goosebumps listening to you, honestly, God, because uh, you're talking about the fans and the connection they have with you and how loud they were during those runs. But there was a moment for me that stands out that defines your career and defines who you are. That's Cleveland, 2010. Can you take me through that play from your vantage point and what happened? Because there's some people listening and watching who didn't have an opportunity to see that. They can look it up on YouTube right now. I suggest they do to find out what 89 was all about. Well, you know, coming off of the line of scrimmage, you know, um, going against the defender that I was going against, you know, DBs do their, their normal thing. They try to get away with the little tugs, and this DB in particular tugged my uh, hand warmer. And when he did that, as I was pulling away from him, my groin popped. Just felt it pop, boom, pop. And I'm like, man, right in the middle of the play. And so I'm hopping through, um, and it looks like Sanchez was going to get sacked. And so now I got to kind of hop in. In, in position where where he can see me a little bit, but 
not really a viable option, (laughs) (laughs) you know, and he turns out and he's looking dead at me and I know he's throwing it to me and you got to come alive. You got to come alive and and go and make that play for the team at that point, third and eight. Uh, And when I caught it, you know, just, just trying to be mindful of, of where the first down marker is and uh, make sure I got the first down, you know, before I, you know, had to make my way off the field. How much does adrenaline, adrenaline override the pain at that point? Oh, it, it, I mean, just just what you're how you how you phrased the question in the beginning, you know, just the mentality of it, and um, and obviously that that adrenaline is going to kick in when you have that, you know, kind of that mentality is just by any means, you know, just kind of help the team out in any way you can, and uh, we'll we'll get the rest fixed, you know, after the game. Ten, an amazing run. You, you go to Manning's place, you guys. Get it done in that final minute. Crow has to return. Sanchez hits Braylon. Um, and then you go to New England. What was that experience like for you to go to Gillette Stadium after taking that pounding oh, yeah. 45-3 about a month before? Mm-hmm. Well, we were ready for that moment, right? We uh, we made a big deal about that moment, right, after, after they beat us 45-3 up there in Gillette and uh, we both were nine and two, something like that going into that game for the division. We felt like we were about to take it from them uh, and and they handed handed it to us. And there was a lot of, you know, uh, in between the lines talking going on. And and so after that, we came back and buried that ball out there, out back. And uh, we just kept that in the back of our minds. And when it was time to play them again, you know, we were all ready about, we we all were ready for that battle. And um, and so to to go into their house at that point in time and 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 and, and go and, and advance to the AFC championship on their field uh, was a was a was a big, big moment. Did you have a higher moment than that, that game? Because you made so many contributions over the course of your career here up until 11. But in terms of the lights being on the situation, how much that game meant in the rivalry, did anything eclipse yeah. that? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, that's that's one to think about right there. I mean, with, with everything surrounding the game and uh, the way that they handled us in that, that second game in the regular season, um, no one really thought we were going to go in there and beat them. Uh, but we all felt like we were, <laughs> you know. And so uh, going into that matchup and just uh, – just uh, proving ourselves right in that sense uh, was was really fun, and and so I, that that has to rank up there, for sure. So it ranks up there. But what were your favorite moments during that game? Because you made some uh, key catches, one over the middle that stands out to everybody, Jets Nation. Well, there, there are so many. There are so many. You know, um, um, Braylon's touchdown before halftime. Uh, Lt had a nice grab. Oh yeah. Uh, for his touchdown, Santonio Holmes' his touchdown, and then um, just when, when they were battling back, uh, just having that opportunity to step up in that moment uh, with the long pass, uh, the catch and run uh, that I had. Um, it was just all of that. All of that was just, just fun to be a part of, and then Sean Green sealing the deal, you know, by – with his long run down the sideline and uh, going to sleep on the ball. We're not going to talk too much about Pittsburgh. I talked to Sanchez about this a couple of weeks ago, but how would have that been different? What what needed to change for you guys to win that game? Man, that's I mean that's you know I think after that game, um, kind of made a bad statement in saying that you know talking about how much they wanted it, uh, but we wanted it. You know, we wanted it as a group. Uh, the hunger in our eyes, it, it, it was it was the same the week before. Um, just one of those days, man, just just those 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 moments where guys step up and make plays and they had a bunch of guys on their side that did that, you know, as far as, you know, the defense is concerned with the strip sack and they ran it back for a touchdown. Yep. Um, ended up being being a big difference in the game. 11, it, it, it ends for you here as a Jet. Um, do you ever go back and say, man, 
I don't think you live like that. But with that being said, yeah. all these contributions, yeah. such a talented guy, so ingrained in the community. Not only you make contributions on the field, but you were a dude who went out in the community. Everybody loved you in the building. Um, how tough was that saying goodbye? Yeah, that was really tough. And that's that's something that's, you know, since since that day, that's been been really tough every time you revisit it, you know, because um, because like I said in the beginning, I'm about the Jets, you know, and um, that's kind of that's kind of how our mindset was my my entire family's mindset. My dad, you know, that pa he passed away in 2018. Uh, he still had that Jets tag on on the front of his car. You know, I had moved on and, and played for two different teams after that, but he never took that Jets tag off the, off that car. You know, it's still on it. You know, and so uh, that's kind of how, you know, we 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 roll really. You know, and uh, so so it, it was tough, it was tough for sure, uh, but I'm glad to be back. Glad to be back. We're pumped to have you back. What drew you into coaching? Because I know you were on Rivera's staff in Carolina, and now you can tell us what you're doing on the college level. Just my love for the game. Love for the game, you know, um, just football from Birmingham, Alabama. You know, uh, as soon as you're born, they put a football in your hand, you know, and then ask you who you're rooting for, Alabama or Auburn, you know. Uh, but but I just love ball, uh, and, and that's at the end of the day, that's that's what it is. And, and so right now, uh, that love for the game has taken me down to Limestone University down in Gaffney, South Carolina. I'm working for an unbelievable head coach in Mike Fury with an unbelievable staff down there that he's put together. And uh, and so we're having a blast right now. We've only been on the job for almost three months now, but we've had a we've had a blast coaching guys up, recruiting, and uh, getting ready for getting ready for this fall. Hey, you said it. Um, growing up in Alabama. You're giving a football to you in your hands when you're a kid. It's either Alabama or Auburn. How the heck does Jericho Cotri wind up at NC State? Did those schools not recruit you? They did, but they backed off. They did, but they backed off. And, and that's kind of how the story went uh, for me with the in-state in -state schools. And so uh, NC State was the first school to offer me. And um, that was that came through uh, my the guy that recruited me. My man Joe Pate, and uh, he stuck. He stuck with me throughout the entire time. Made sure that I was getting everything handled as far as uh, being eligible and uh, getting, you know, uh, admitted to NC State. And so um, they stayed there. They stayed there. And you know, at the end of the day, once I went on the visit, it was it was home for me. It was home for me, and I, I committed soon after that, and and signed, and I was ready to roll. Do you and Philip Rivers still talk? Yeah, 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 we do. We do. He's he's coaching ball now down in Alabama um, in high school, and so he's having a blast doing that. And um, that's that's something that we had talked about, you know, while we were in college, you know, playing, and then when we're done, you know, coaching high school. Um, and Chad Pennington kind of had that same same uh, right. same mindset as well. Gr uh, growing up down the street from UT. Yeah, 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 and so yeah, so Philip is having he's he's having a blast doing that, you know, and I'm I'm rooting hard for him. NC State's gonna be pretty good this year. They got a nice football team. They do, they do, and uh, I'm excited. I'm excited for what they have going on. Uh, Coach Doran down there is doing an excellent job. Uh, he's built that thing the right way, and they got a quarterback to lead them, you know. And they they've always played good defense, ran the ball well, and now they got a quarterback that's. Uh, that they can they can go and win it for them. Yeah, Devin Leary. Listen, watch out Clemson this year. WinBet is now live in New Jersey, and they're bringing the excitement of Win Las Vegas to online sports betting. Get in on all your favorite teams, players, and sports, from boosted parlays to live in-game odds on every major sport. They have what you need to win. Sign up today to receive a special offer, risk-free $1,000 sports bet. Download the WinBet app now or visit wynnbet.com to start winning. WinBet, an official sportsbook and gaming partner of the New York Jets. Offer subject to change. Terms and conditions at winbet.com must be 20 one the older present in New Jersey. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem, call 1-800-270-7117. What does a receiver have to do to fit in your room? Well, that's be a smart player. Um, I, I think at the, at the from the outset, 
Um, you you got to you got to feel the description, right? Uh, you got to get open and catch the ball, and, and and we'll help you develop in those areas. Um, but when it comes to you know being in my room, you got to have that team mindset because we're all going to develop and we're all going to be able to go out and contribute in some type of way. And so we got to have that team mindset to be able to, when our number is called, go in and, and make plays for the team and um, be excited about the, the success of the team. Because once the success of the team happens, then everybody else is going to going to reap the benefits of it. What was it like for you to watch the Jets here at minicamp? And you go out on the green grass and and just take it in as an observer. That was that was really great to watch. Uh, it was really great to watch that practice. Um, just the exci- the excitement, the enthusiasm of the guys. Um, you know, just just you know, the way that they were flying around and the communication. You know, the excitement about you know the a guy making the play. You know, whether that be offensively or defensively, those those guys were were. It, it looks like a close knitted group already, you know. So it was it was fun. It was fun watching their practice. It was it was fun meeting coach, and um, and and so uh, I look I look forward to, to to coming back more, you know, in in the future. Yeah. What do you think about Robert Sala just from afar? And then you had an opportunity to talk to him today because, you know, the players gravitate towards him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah coach Sala, um, uh, I was a fan of his before before the Jets. You know, uh, hired him. Uh, I, I just really enjoyed watching him. You know, just from a a player standpoint, right? Because I've played against you know teams that you know he's coached on, and, and also coached against teams that he's coached on. But but his excitement about his players, I mean, that's you know that that's that's what you love as a player. You know, coach coach is in this. You know, he's in this with us, and and so I've always admired that about him, and uh, just 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 his. His his vision about how he wants to do things and communicating that um, that that's always something that I've admired about him. How can a receiver help a young quarterback? This whole roster is young, but yeah. Zach Wilson's entering year two. Being dependable, right? Uh, if the if, if the the quarterback is expecting you to be at a certain spot, just be at that spot, right? And and when you're at that spot, make the play, right? So the more you make plays. Um, the more the ball to come your way, really, right? Because the quarterback throws to guys that they can trust, right? If is he going to run the right route? You know, is he going to make a play for me? And uh, and so that's that's kind of how the quarterbacks, you know, view it overall, right? Does this guy know what he's doing? No, uh, is he going to make a play for me? I'm not going to ask you for a scouting report on every receiver out there. That would not be fair of me, but. What do you think of just watching the group as a whole? You got Corey Davis, who's a veteran uh, receiver, Elijah Moore entering year two. The Jets drafted Garrett Wilson in the first round, number 10 overall. They got Braxton Berrios back. Yeah. Well, it, it's, it's a group that has a little bit of everything. Right? You got big bodies in there. You got you got fast guys. You got quick guys. Um, the physical part of it is, is in the group. Uh, you know, it, it, it's a group to be excited about. You know, and uh, and so Coach Coach Austin is going to do a great job with them. He has done a great job with them so far, and uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing that development. What do you think about the way receivers' salaries have just exploded uh, across the National Football League? Yeah, <laughs> re- really, really good for them. You know, um, it's a position, man, that it, it, it's hard to make it. It's hard to make it in this league at that position, and. You know, you you only got a few years before people start calling you a bust, you know, and so you got to be on it. You got, you you have to really be on it. And and so when guys are on it, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, it's good to see them reap those benefits from it. Um, The versatility aspect of the game, uh, how much did you like that for your team that, hey, yeah, I can play slot, but I can play outside. I can do anything you want. And and how much of value is there for guys like they aforementioned Elijah Moore and Garrett Wilson? We saw him at Ohio State a move around the formation. How much how helpful is that for receivers? Yeah, I I, I love that. You're just putting guys in different spots to be able to make plays. Uh, it speaks to coaching really. Guys that coaches that can see that guys are not just this right just because he's you know five ten 
you know, he's a slot guy. You know, if the guy can go out and, and make plays on the outside, he, he deserves to be on the outside as well. And so when coaches see that and, and they're moving guys around like that, I mean, that's that's a fun thing to watch, you know. And, and when you got guys that can make plays, you know, you can move an Elijah Moore around like that, man. That's I know that's that's got to be exciting, you know, because you, 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 the the team that is playing you that week, they can't really, you know, watch tape and and say this guy's going to be at X or Z you know, or in the slot. You know, he's he's going to be moving around. You know, and so uh, that's that's got to be fun for a receiver. Hey, I want to ask you about hard knocks because you were part of that. What was the experience like? Because you're actually here tonight. You're going to be at the premiere of our production crew's series, Flight 2022, New Heights, which is cool. Access is tremendous. But what was it like for you to be part of Hard Knocks and have cameras everywhere? Oh, I can't wait to see that, by the way. I saw a <laughs> clip of that. saw a little trailer. I can't wait to see that. Um, but Hard Knocks, uh, it, it was it was a great experience, really great experience. Um, you know, it's, it's weird initially, you know, with all of the cameras around, but you know, after a week or so, you don't even realize they're there, you know. And uh, but it was really fun to, to just go back and watch, and um, and see, you know, really kind of how coaches think about you, you know. And uh, but also how you interact with your teammates and how how you as a group interact. And and so that was that was a fun fun thing to watch. I watched it every every week. You know? <laughs> did you? Yeah, yeah, I did. We're at training camp at Cortland. Uh, listen, and have enjoyed this so much. Um, real quickly. Let's go back to the fans uh, because you're going to be able to mingle with some season ticket holders, some people who were at the seats and at MetLife or the old Meadowlands. Um, can you talk about your connection uh, with the people who rooted you on early on in your career? And again, you went to 2015, and that speaks to your commitment to the game and everything you brought to the table, playing with three different teams. I remember it all. You know, I remember getting drafted and I remember the fans' excitement about that, you know, um, me being able to learn from Wayne, you know, just, just hearing hearing all of those things. Um, I, I, I saw the excitement about me being extended, you know, as a young player that developed in this program, um, you know, and, and I still hear the excitement, you know, um, you know, from time to time, and I meet a lot of Jets fans, no, no matter where I go, you know, and I just love this fan base. It's a hungry fan base, um, and, you know, you got to feed them, feed them, you know, but but um, everywhere I go, I meet Jets fans. Uh, living down in Charlotte, uh, down in Concord, there was a, 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 a cupcake, a bakery yeah. that, I, that I used to visit uh, frequently, and uh, Doe, a New York-style bakery. They were Jets fans. And so I used to go in there and just chop it up with them. We talk about Jets. We talk about the Jets, you know. And so um, just Jets fans is 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 is, is a big part of, of 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 what we do, you know. It's a big part of what we do and, and I'm excited to meet 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 a group meet the group tonight. Well, I've really enjoyed this and listen, don't be a stranger. This is home for you. You will always be part of the Jets family. No, I appreciate that. I've always felt that way. I always felt that way. <laughs>